YouTube boss it going the godows is back and it's combine week I'm here with an updated mock draft as we approach the combine during the combine we'll have winners and losers videos each day uh, and then we'll have an updated a big mock draft after it's all done uh, post combine with two rounds we'll do so excited about it I've been watching a lot of films so I have some updates before we get to the combine here some thoughts uh, join us for all of our content we have a bunch of free agency videos on the channel and definitely more to come we'll have predictions and then we'll have grades throughout the way of free agency it's right around the corner I still have Caleb Williams number one to the Bears uh, I know Peter King posted an article that he thinks the Bears are going to trade they're going to trade down uh, I, I think that could happen if they feel like Caleb Williams' attitude isn't there. Maybe he doesn't want to play for the Bears. I'm not buying those rumors, but it's definitely something that could start up or it could actually be true, I suppose. I'm just not buying it right now. Um, you have an opportunity to get the quarterback, an elite quarterback of the future, um, you know, kind of the dream to do that and get one on a rookie contract. Uh, you know, looking at future draft classes, quarterback classes, doesn't seem like any coming that are, that are like this. So you have the opportunity here. Um, so I do think they will take a quarterback leaning Caleb Williams right now uh, for the Bears. Uh, second pick, uh, I have Drake May still. Gonna, there's a lot of people that don't like Drake May, and there's some people like myself that really like Drake May. He does have some, you know, bad moments. Every, every really every quarterback does. You know, he'll he'll play hero ball a bit. He'll throw up for grabs. I think early on in his career, we could see some bad interceptions, but we'll also have big plays to go along with it. And I think over time, he can kind of cut down on that. Maybe. You know, Josh Allen started. He's not Josh Allen, but in that category, like that type of quarterback where he's just got to calm down a little bit. But he but he has that gunslinger's mentality. He has that arm strength where, you know, he's got to try to make plays. And sometimes they're, you know, they're not going to go 100%, you know, perfectly every single time. You know, um, sneaky mobile. Not really a mobile quarterback, but out of all the quarterbacks in the draft these last two years, he has the most first down scrambles. Uh, or scrambles resulting in a first down on third and fourth down. And Patrick Mahomes leads the NFL in that category, just knowing a smart scrambler, knowing when he has to go and the ability to be able to be mobile when you when you have to be. But there's a lot of talk about, you know, because they brought in Cliff Kingsbury and like the connection with Caleb Williams. They want to go get Caleb Williams because they have Cliff Kingsbury. That could be the, tr the truth, but I, I'm not really buying that, actually. I mean, he was with Caleb Williams for just one year. Williams was better the year before, obviously. Um, I think people are connecting, you know, him and Kyler Murray, their undersized scrambling quarterbacks, and Kingsbury coached him. Didn't really go great with the Cardinals as well. But, you know, what Kingsbury has going for him is he coached Patrick Mahomes, um, you know, back when he was at Texas Tech. You know, and he did call a good offense then. And I know Williams gets some comparisons to Mahomes just because the way they escape pressure. But uh, they're a lot different, actually. May is more of the build. Uh, in a in a smart scrambler like Patrick Mahomes, he has that arm strength. You know, not quite Patrick Mahomes, but um, pretty damn strong arm too. So maybe this is a guy. Maybe people are kind of missing that. This is a guy that Kingsbury wants to work with there in Washington. So I'm gonna stick with that. I don't see them taking Jaden Daniels over Drake May. Um, maybe they would take Caleb Williams over Drake May if both were there. I just don't see that being a scenario either. Third pick. Uh, Patriots could trade back. If they traded back, I don't think they would be targeting a quarterback. Uh, you know, usually don't trade back to take a quarterback because you're devaluing the most important position in football. Last time I remember that happening was the Bills trading back and taking EJ Manuel. It did not work out well. It uh, just doesn't happen. There's a reason for it. So they are to trade back. I, I think uh, it would be because it, it, they feel the roster is a ways away, and, and it could be. They need, they need a lot on the offensive line. They need receivers. Uh, the defense will be all right, but they could use some things here and there, depending on what they do in free agency on, on defense. But, but so it could be a trade back. Well, I mean, we'll do some trades in the future. But I'm starting to think it could be, but maybe not because I, when when do you have an opportunity to get a quarterback like Jane Daniels? You know, looking at next year's draft class, you pretty much have to have the top pick in the draft, and the, and that would be for Quinn Ewers. You know, Daniels could be a better prospect than him. It's hard to predict how Ewers, what type of prospect he'll be next year. I do like him maybe more than other people, but besides the point, uh, you have an opportunity here. They're going to need a quarterback in the future. Um, so Jane Daniels to the Patriots at three still. So a lot of these are still the same as last time, but we do have a, some changes. But the Cardinals, Marvin Harrison Jr., this one's interesting. This is one that this might, when we do this video a week from now, it is a week from you now, Monday, you know, the Combine's last day is Sunday. We'll do an updated post-Combine uh, like we always do. Uh, and this one could be a different receiver in a week. It could be, and I thought about it right here, it could be LSU's receiver Malik Neighbors. 
um, who's actually some there's some buzz going around. There's apparently some teams that have him as receiver one uh, because he. I mean, I think a lot of these receivers, Marvin Harrison Jr., really could do it all. Like a do it all receiver. But Neighbors is really. I mean, he dominates the slot, the outside. He can, he's a good contested catcher. He's got a crazy speed. The acceleration is absurd. Uh, after a catch ability is ridiculous. So literally a do-it-all receiver, and the Cardinals could go that route. I'm going to stick with Marvin Harrison Jr., maybe the safest receiver to take uh, out of the bunch. Really, really good separator, smart separator, smart route runner, ridiculous hands. Um, but Marvin Harrison Jr., is the news today is he's not going to work out the combine. He's like not even there. Um, you know, And that's really not – people think of, oh, he's not going to run drills and run a 40-yard dash. It's not a big deal. And it really isn't for a proven guy like this. But what people forget – is the maybe the biggest part of the combine people forget this is players the prospects meeting with teams meeting with coaches they sit down in rooms sometimes you'll get to be you'll see some clips or you'll hear players talk about it what they talked about but they get to know the players get to know their character if they feel like you know, they get along with them if, if he's a fit on the team you know with the, with their teammates uh and then they kind of get down to the x's and o's and kind of test their knowledge a little bit it is extremely important. So Marvin Harrison Jr., um, you know, not going to do that with teams, it sounds like. Uh, and then he won't participate in his pro day as well. So could a Malik Neighbors pass him up? Or do some teams already have him as receiver one? So uh, and Neighbors is a guy that can just tear up the combine. So a week from now, we could be saying Harrison Jr. stock's about the same. Teams didn't really get to talk to him. If that's the case, maybe he goes there and t- ends up doing that. We'll see. Um And then maybe Neighbors goes in this spot uh, for the Arizona Cardinals. So we'll see there. But the the receivers and the quarterbacks are legit at the top here. Uh, Fifth pick. And there is Malik Neighbors, uh, another very safe pick, an elite prospect for sure, uh, has that elite potential in the NFL. Again, you can do anything you want with him. He played equal, pretty much, no, not not dead equal 50-50, but close to equal snaps in the slot and outside for LSU. When they threw him the ball up for grabs, he went and got it, or he tracked it. He, he made some contested catches. When he was in the slot, he found open soft spots and, and, and took the ball and went with it. Acceleration's ridiculous. He's probably going to run. I think he's going to run four threes, but he, he, if he runs four fours, that's that's flying, and that's really he feels like a four three. The way he accelerates, you know, it's ridiculous. So it's it's all on the tape for him. Uh, Chargers do have some receivers. Keenan Allen, they have an interesting decision with his contract. Um, some talk about Mike Williams. I don't think they move on from him, but just different types of receivers. And Quentin Johnson didn't really work out. And it's a different staff um, that they're not, you know, uh, you know, going to force Quentin Johnston, obviously. Uh, so this would be the best player on the board at this point. I think with, with who's gone. Uh, so far, the top four picks, I think for everybody, maybe some people have Adunze as a better receiver, whether they're really close. Uh, but I think that'd be the route the Chargers go. Jim Harbaugh, like, all right, this is the best player right here. This guy can do everything. Let's go get him. Let's get, you know, Keenan Allen's not going to be around forever. Uh, you know, guys like that. So, uh, and then at six, I feel like I've had this in every mock draft, which is weird because I, if you, their first overall pick makes sense. Like, if you have that, but I do mock drafts every year. I don't remember having, like, the sixth pick or something, having, like, the same guy every mock I do, but it just so happens Adunze is the pick there uh, from Washington. And uh, this receiver class at the top is everybody knows that it's insane. But I almost hate ranking these guys, not because it's difficult, but because you got to put one of these guys at receiver three. I mean, these are receiver ones in most of the draft, but Adunze kind of has that dominant feel. Like you just throw the ball up to him, he makes a play. Um, You know, doesn't get the separation maybe uh, the other two get, but does get separation. Again, really ridiculous body control, tracking ability, contested catch ability. It's what the Giants needed in a receiver one. This feels like it's destined to happen. The way I go through different scenarios, I could have a million different scenarios, but I still end up having Roma Dunze to the Giants. But I think the only thing stopping it is if somebody hops them, you know, or if the Chargers prefer him over Neighbors, maybe, and then Neighbors is here, then they take Neighbors, you know. So we'll 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 see. Um, but on the pick seven, I've had this before too. Joe Alt uh, of Notre Dame going to the Tennessee Titans. They could. It feels like the Titans are going to go tackle, receiver, or Brock Bowers. Um, you know, that's just kind of the feeling for everybody, I feel like. But in this case, you go Joe Alt, you could go J.C. Latham. If it's tackle, I think it's Joe Alt or J.C. Latham. Uh, I watch all the top tackles. It's a very intriguing class this year, a lot of hype around it. 
Uh, and I think I to me, I think a lot of people disagree. Well, I think people a lot of people agree that these guys belong at the top, Joel Alt and JC Latham, but there's some there's people that say you can put any of these guys at the top, and there's people that have Fashano at the top. I'm just gonna firm disagreeing with those. I, I, I think it's Alt and Latham. I, I think they're actually pretty clear cut. Um, whether you have it Alt and Latham, Latham Alt, those are the two guys that are at top. And I've heard some things from you know, people within the league actually that that think a lot. They actually like Latham a lot. Alt's got a little more upside, but they believe, uh, basically agreeing with uh, what I saw on tape, uh, that those are the expect those two to go first. Uh, Alt was uh, in high school was a tight end and a defensive end, so just a natural athlete in Notre Dame who's known for their offensive line development. Uh, turn him into a tackle, and he's been he's been very good, and he's. Um, you know, long, athletic, obviously. He's got that athletic background playing different positions, which is great, knowing the other side of the ball, who he's got to block. Um, he's got a great tape right now, and it feels like he has the most upside out of these guys as well. So that's why I feel like he um, would be the first one taken. The Titans got maybe the best in the business coaching the offensive line in Callahan over there, so he'd love to have his hands on Joe Wall. Uh, with the eighth pick, Falcons go Dallas Turner. So I've been watching the top edge rushers as well. I do, I am com I'm pretty confident with Dallas Turner being the first one taken, which I think a lot of people think that. Uh, but you know, but you see a lot of Jared Verse and going before Turner, according to some people, and maybe some Law too. Um, I think it's going to be Turner, and if it's not Turner, I think it's neither of those two guys I actually just listed. We'll talk about the other pass rusher. You probably can guess it. We'll get there, um, but I, that I like a lot. But I believe Turner will be the first one taken. I, I think he's a really solid fit in Raheem Morris's defense. Um, what I like about him is he's explosive, he's athletic, and he's long to kind of go with it. Uh, he's been very productive as well. Might be the difference between him and another guy I really like as well. Uh, is that he has been Turner's been super productive. So Falcons will be looking for a quarterback. Uh, you know, I keep saying I think they'll try to make if if he makes it the free agency. I think they'll try to make a push for Kirk Cousins. But um, pass rushers, they, they need a quarterback. They need a pass rusher. So that's where I'm at with the Falcons. Bears. I definitely think the Bears. There's some talking about them trading back with the first pick. I think most people think they'll take a quarterback. I agree. Uh, I think they'll trade back with this pick. I actually, I'm not doing trades yet. It's a little early. Let's get through the combine, get the updates, the the stock changes from the combine. And then after that, we start getting into the trades. You start creating a mess if you start doing too many trades. But uh, this is a good spot for the Bears to move down. They lost a second-round pick uh, when trading for uh, Montez Sweat, obviously. Um, you know, that's an early second round pick. So maybe they want to get picks back. Maybe they got to want to get, maybe they want to get a pick like that back. Um, so you trade back here and you get, they, you know, I haven't taken Brian Thomas Jr. right here. So another receiver, the top four receivers are set. These are the top four receivers. The ones that came off the board, Brian Thomas will be number four. Um, you know, he's ahead of the guys behind him. Uh, but he isn't the top three guys, obviously. He's not going to be an elite prospect. But, man, this is your boundary receiver. This is your outside receiver, contested catch guy, touchdown machine. Um, he'll go up at the highest point and take that ball away. I love that. He's athletic, too. He gets he gets some separation down the field. You like more separation on underneath stuff. Uh, but this is like a perfect – this is like what the Bears don't have. Like, DJ Moore's a do-it-all type guy. is great. This is a, this is you know what he what Brian Thomas is best at. DJ Moore is maybe that's not his like biggest strength, but even though he's pretty much good at everything, so I think pairing those two together would be huge. So he could go a little bit earlier. Than you think maybe maybe this is a little. But again, Bears could trade back. They can target a Brian Thomas Jr. They can target. Um, I mean they can target like a Jackson Powers Johnson. Been looking for a center for a bit. If they trade it further back, or maybe they want to get their hands on a second round pick so they can take Zach Frazier, but he could go first. So I think they're looking for a center. Um, some of these pass rushers are really close and great, and I don't know if they'll view Dallas Turner's. He's gone anyways. Is a is a great fit. You trade back for I think a Jared Verse. I think Eberflus would think he'd fit his defense. So um, you got some options if you trade back. So I think there's talk about the Bears possibly trading back. Watch out for it. Uh, and some people saying that first pick, I'm saying this pick. I'm saying this pick. So, um, but they, I think a pretty good option here. I got outside contested catch, uh, you know, touchdown machine to pair with DJ Moore. Um, and there are in, in nine picks, you have your top four receivers already off the board. They're that that good. Number ten, yeah, JC Latham. I think it's going to be Latham and Alt. The first two, I'm going to be surprised if it's not, actually. I'm going to be very surprised. Those are the two top tackles in this draft I've been watching. I've watched a lot of It's probably who I watch the most of. Um, not live, you know, based off my live viewings, uh, but based off recent film. 
Uh, Alton Latham are the clear-cut top two, in my opinion. So Latham, you know, huge, big body, physical blocker, will throw guys around. The only thing, the only thing I want, some of these freaky pass rushers in the NFL, the ones that, you know, very quick, very speedy, uh, maybe he doesn't have the speed to deal with those guys so that, you know, early on that that's what could hurt him a little bit. I think Alt has a little more upside. Who's better day one? You probably could argue Latham, uh, but I think Alt definitely has the better upside. But those two guys have the best tape. Um, they're the best right now. They have a lot of upside. Uh, so the Jets desperately need a tackle, and they go Latham here. Uh, it could be Latham to the Titans and then Alt to the Jets. It's a very uh, decent possibility. Uh, for the Vikings, thought about quarterback, thought about a J.J. McCarthy, Bo Nix. I just got a feeling the Vikings could trade up for one of the sure thing guys, uh, or try, I should say. I mean, that's their views. I could see Drake May in that Kevin O'Connell offense. It's going to be very tough to do. I think the team's, staying, the team's up there want to stay put and take those quarterbacks. So I think it's maybe trade up for a guy like that or you know stay put and take best available. Um, it's probably going to depend if they get Kirk Cousins back or not. Byron Murphy, the second. You, you guys, if you've been watching my videos, you know I've been a big fan of him. I had him top defensive lineman in the class uh, when people were talking about him in the second round and talking about Newton as the top guy. Uh, I'll actually take it. I've been watching a lot of film lately. I'll take it another step further. Um, which is a different take. I, he is actually my best defensive player in the draft. It's not a defensive draft at the top. Um, maybe only two defensive players in the top ten because the quarterbacks, the receivers, the offensive linemen, uh, you know, and Brock Bowers in there as well. Byron Murphy, the second, is my favorite defensive player in the draft. This guy is a stud on the inside. Um, seen him line up at D tackle, you know, three technique, nose tackle. Um, he, what you want to find from defensive tackles, you know, first they better be able to stop the run. If you're on the inside, you better be able, better be able to stop the run. You better, better be able to read it. You better be able to fill gaps. Um, you know, you better have, you know, some power, some strength to move guys around. But what makes you a first round pick, uh, at backfield production, uh, you know, and then what makes you even further, you know, if you have some different traits and, and, you know, the athletic ability that Murphy has and some different like pass rush moves that he has and, uh, the different ways for him to win. It's all adding up for me. Uh, I'm a huge fan. I think mean, this guy can be a star defensive tackle in the NFL. So it's kind of too good to pass for the Vikings here. They definitely could use another guy like that. They have Harrison Phillips as more of the nose tackle. Um, so I'm a massive buyer. I'm, you know, maybe the biggest on the planet. You know, So excited to watch him at the combine. The, the Texas duo up front was pretty good. Uh, and then pick 12. So Brock Bowers, he could go as early as 5. Um, and he can definitely go in the top 10. Uh, he said he wanted to play for the Titans, and the Titans have an opportunity there. They do badly need uh, tackles or receivers, though. They could use the tight end, Brock Bowers, but uh, so he could go up there. I think Sean Payton would like him a lot. They could go quarterback. I think Payton would probably like McCarthy or Bo Nix as well. Uh, with Bowers there, it just seems like too much value uh, to reach on one of those quarterbacks. Um, so maybe this is the latest he goes um, you know, for, for the Broncos here, but I do like that fit in that Payton offense. Uh, pick 13, Talis Fuaga. Some people think could end up being a guard. I do like him at tackle. Uh, you know, again, I watched a ton of the tackle tape recently, and there, there's games where I'm like, there was games where I'm like, this guy is insane. Like, okay, there isn't just a top two. There, there's Fuaga as well. Like, could he be tackle one? And there's games where I'm like, eh, like I, 13 almost feels early. So it's a little inconsistent from game to game. So I was a little disappointed in that. But he's good. Like, he has these flashy moments. I love when he gets to that next level downfield, gets in space, bullies guys. Um, he'll move. He wants to get down there and move. So love that. Uh, Raiders could definitely use a right tackle. Uh, that's where he played at Oregon State. I think he'll stay there. I, I don't think he'll go to guard. But some people talking about it. Um, you know, but he a little inconsistent on the tape. That's really why he's not in the category, in, in at least in my opinion, of Joe Alt uh, and, and J.C. Latham of the Notre Dame and Alabama tackles. But Raiders uh, take Fuaga at 13. 14, there's J.J. McCarthy getting a little bit of buzz right now. Um, you know, see, people see the upside. I could see it as well. Uh, just wish there was more while he was at Michigan. Michigan did win the national championship, so that definitely helps his resume. They, they won it doing what they were doing, but – um, I think it, you know a lot of it was because their run game, uh, but McCarthy was clutch. I thought he was clutch. He actually can th throw on the run pretty well as well, which I like that. Like he wants to get outside. He knows when to get outside the pocket. He wants to do it, and he'll he'll look to throw first. You want to see the, a guy that wants to get out of the pocket and just wants to run. I don't want to see that for the NFL level. 
Um, and you don't see that from McCarthy. He's very, I think he's a very smart quarterback. I think the combine's going to be big for him, not really for the drills, the workouts, but for talking to teams. Um, that, that's for any player, any quarterback, because you want your quarterback to be as sharp as he possibly can be. Know what he's talking about. I'm not really worried about that. Just kind of get to know the kid. He kind of heard the story, kind of dealt with some like mental health issues, um, which he's kind of recovered from that. He's doing good, so good for him. It's awesome. Uh, but I think, you know, people want to kind of get in his mind a little bit, see how, how stable he is, how strong he is as a, as a, as a leader, you know? So I think that'd be big actually, uh, for him at the combine, but I think the Saints a good situation for the saints, you know, Derek Carr is not the guy for a long, long time here. He's going to be the starter this year, but, uh, McCarthy's more of your upside guy. I think if you throw him in and start him day one, I think he's going to really struggle. So go to a situation where he doesn't absolutely need to do that. Um, uh, I don't like the teams that get a quarterback and sit him behind like, a. Um, you know, washed up, completely washed up quarterback or a bad quarterback. I don't like that. I, you know, Derek Carr isn't great right now, but I think it's a pretty good situation for McCarthy and the Saints to do that. Um, so I definitely could see that here. He's probably going to go earlier than you think. Uh, 15, Terry and Arnold. So this scenario, um, the corners dropped a little bit because of the quarterbacks, receivers at the top. Um, you know, you, and you got some other positions obviously in there, and the offensive tackle starting to come off the board. Uh, you know, so it pushed the corners back, and Arnold, the top corner in the class, um, you know, who I think is going to be a really good outside corner, but he also very solid on the inside. And the Colts had Kenny Moore doing that for so long, doing both, uh, and he's a free agent. So, uh, and they definitely could use a corner either way if they get him back or not. But yeah, opportunity to take the best corner in the class right here. I like this a lot uh, for, for the Colts. Uh, number 16, I like Jackson Powers Johnson for the Seahawks. I think it's a really good fit, and they're going to look to com- kind of complete that offense line. The interior needs some work, so get that center that I think also uh, could play guard if you need him to. He had a really good showing at the Senior Bowl, like moments where you say, like, that guy could play guard. Like, he could be really good at guard, but probably going to be a center. He's got Pro Bowl potential as a center. I'm more of a guy of, you know, I don't love taking a center this early, if I'm being honest. Um, you know, I, it's not like the most important position. It's important, but you you want to find a guy that can actually snap the ball consistently and stay in front of guys. But it just seems like the best centers in football, um, third, fourth round, you know, around there. But Jackson Powers Johnson is different. It's one of the better center prospects we've seen in a long time. I do think the Seahawks will like him in that offense. Um, then it brings up the question. I think the most perfect scenario is you take more of a premium position here. And if you're able to get a Zach, because I like Zach Frazier a lot from West Virginia, if you're able to get him in the second round, um, which he very well, we may talk about him in a little bit, he very well can go late first. I'm just saying perfect scenario, not the scenario that's going to happen. You take more of a premium position in the first round, and you get a guy that's really not super far off from Jackson Powers Johnson in the second. But uh, I I see a fit here with Jackson Powers Johnson and the Seahawks. Um, I think there's going to be a few teams after. I think the Steelers, they may have to move ahead of the Seahawks, but do you trade up for a center? Um, did the Bears trade back from nine. I'd watch out for them. Um, there's, a, there's a couple teams there. Uh, 17, the Jaguars taking a pass rusher, Chop Robinson from Penn State. Uh, I'm a big fan of Chop Robinson. Uh, the stat watchers are not going to be. I'll tell you that. A lot of stat watchers out there. Only six career sacks. And that is, it's tough. You wish there was more. Um, obviously there, you wish there was more production, but if you watch him play, he makes more of an impact in the stat show. He's always disrupting. He's, he's always causing problems. He's always in the backfield. Uh, Penn state had him drop in coverage a little bit as well. Remember, he wasn't at Penn state. His full career started at Maryland. Um, so I think these are all factors on maybe why he doesn't have a lot. I mean, you should have more sacks, but more, more sacks. But I think the people that kind of just based off, base things off sack numbers, they're not going to love them. They're not going to love them, but man, I like chop Robinson. I think he's going to have. He's gonna have way more production in the NFL. He is twitchy as shit. It's like he, ex- I, I'm a, everybody should be, but I am a sucker for get off when it comes to edge rushers. I want to see you explode off the ball. You cannot coach that. You can maybe work on your. Th- it's, it's it's a lot of it's up here and reactions and timing, and you have to be athletic. So you can work on the athletic and the explosion part. But this guy, best in the class, he has elite get off. This guy has elite. An elite NFL get off. That doesn't mean he's elite, but in general, but he really does. He explodes off the ball, and I I, I love that. He's used a little undersized. I think he's got a pretty good build to him. Uh, I can see him playing four three or three four. I like Chop Robinson. He's gonna be a lot more productive uh, at the next level. Um, I, I am pretty confident that Dallas Turner ends up. We talked about it. Ends up being the first pass rusher taken. Um, 
because he's explosive. He's not. He's pretty twitchy off the ball. I don't think he's quite Chop Robinson, but it's not too far off. He'd probably be the next most explosive off the ball. Um, but there's a little bit more polish to his game right now. He has a lot of length as well, and he has the production playing for Alabama in the SEC. Uh, but if there was a guy that I was actually going to surprise and uh, Turner and hop him, people were talking about verse and lot too. And I do like those guys. They could be, I would actually watch out for Robinson uh, as uh, you know, the potential guy to, you know, hop, hop over him. But you know, the Jags, maybe they won't need an edge rusher. You know, I think Trayvon Walker could take a next, next step and they're going to either tag or extend or both uh, on Josh Allen. Um, you know, so to be determined how much they need a pass rusher, but they were looking for one last year while they had both those guys at the deadline, remember? Uh, and then two years ago, they had, they were better when they had Arden Key. They used all three of those guys. So they have Trayvon Walker, who's more of your long physical guy that's like, is he a, is he um, interior or is he exterior? They use him as an edge guy, but he's one of those guys. And Josh Allen's kind of a, he's kind of an all-around pass rusher, you know, pretty athletic, makes plays just all around like today's type of pass rusher. And Robinson is your explosive athlete. Uh, not that those other, and obviously those other guys are athletes too, but this is your twitch, twitchy athlete. So it, it kind of combines all three and it, it feels pretty good. It feels pretty good in my mind. I think watch out for Robinson to rise up earlier in this deep down. I, I want to put him uh, going earlier in this. Cause as you can tell, I like Robinson, but um, let's watch what he does at the combine. We're kind of getting ready for the combine here. I'm excited, but um, I was surprised how much I liked Robinson when I watched him. Uh, and then Troy Fatanu is another one that I'm a big fan of. He's growing on me more, more and more. Um, tackle from Washington. I list him as O-line because he could potentially play guard. Uh, Fuaga is kind of in that category too. I think uh, if you told me, if you saw the future and you said one of Fuaga and Fatanu is playing guard in the NFL and one is playing tackle, I would say uh, Fatanu is probably playing guard. Uh, but I like him at tackle. When I watch him, I'm like, all right, the way, uh, the way he carries his body, the way he moves, where his strengths and weaknesses are, yeah, he could be a guard. He can be a damn good one. Maybe a Pro Bowl potential guard. At tackle, he can be a Pro Bowler, but that's a little much right now. If you viewed him as that, you'd probably be going earlier. But the more and more I watch him, the more I like him at tackle. Like how, how It's, it's going to be difficult to move him off of tackle with the way he played. Uh, and I think the Bengals, he played left. I think the Bengals can transition him into a right tackle, and if they need his help at guard or they feel that's better. Uh, and he's a quick mover, too. I think you know you don't want another Orlando Brown uh, like that style of guy completely. You want something a little more athletic on that side. Orlando Brown Jr. is great, but um, just something like a little different is my point. So I like Fatanu. I right now combine's gonna be big. Um, shuttles huge for offense linemen. Their measurements. Um, Fatanu right now probably is my tackle three. I'm gonna keep him at tackle. I see the upside at guard. Um, but you got Alton Latham at the top, and they're they're separate for me. Uh, and then Fatanu actually might be number three. Uh, for me right now. So I, I like him. Just something about him uh, growing on me more and more, more and more. Bengals take him at 18. He's probably going to go a little earlier than you think. 19, and there is Liatu Latu from UCLA, um, who I do like. A lot of these pass rushers are very close in grade. They're all different, though, like much different than Chop Robinson. Like Latu has way more production than Chop Robinson. Chop Robinson is way more of an athlete, explodes off the ball way, way more. Uh, Latu's a little patient sometimes. This guy just makes plays, man. He just he, like even when he drops in coverage, he just makes plays. He gets his hands on the ball. He's so good with his hands. He has a collection of pass rush moves. Um, so this is he could end up being the most productive right away out of the pass rushers. Um, I, I think he definitely could fit the Rams over there, and they're definitely looking for another one uh, to pair with Byron Young, who they got last year. Uh, so maybe, maybe just too good to pass at this point too. Some of these pass rushers are dropping a little bit. So he goes 19, 20, uh, Quinion Mitchell, who was a standout, the senior bowl, um, likely the second cornerback drafted after Terry and Arnold. I think most people agree with that. Uh, definitely my stance could go earlier in this, in this scenario, we can have it every different scenario. In this scenario, the corners end up dropping a little bit, pass rushers a little bit too. And I think it's realistic because again, the top three quarterbacks got to go. Then you factor in McCarthy or, or Knicks or both. Uh, and then you, f you factor in the ridiculous receivers at the top and you factor in the top tackles. Like, you know, and then you got some legit talents like Byron, Byron Murphy, the second. And, you know, so it's, it could happen. These corners can drop a little bit. Mitchell, big time playmaker was awesome at the senior bowl. Did play weaker competition at Toledo, but, um, he was dominant there, dominant at the senior bowl. Uh, Steelers definitely could use another corner to pair with Joey Porter Jr. I think they would like Jackson Powers Johnson. 
Um, I don't think you trade up for a center. I'm a little hesitant when taking a center in the first round, but this class is different. The top two guys are legit, and they're just going to be higher graded than some other guys. Um, you know, so it, it maybe may, it make an exception for this year, but I wouldn't trade up for a center um, in the first round, like uh, when you have to give up a lot. Uh, but Mitchell right now, the series 21. And there's Alu Fashanu, who some people have, uh, a decent amount of people have him as the top tackle in the class, and they have him going in the top 10. They even have him top 10 on their big board. I'm just in a disagreement with that. I watched his tape, and, and he was better. That's why it's tough, because you watch him last year, not this year that just ended, and you do like him a little bit more. But ah, I just I am not seeing the hype with him. And you know, you know, maybe that I'm usually pretty good at my takes, but maybe that backfires on me. I do want to watch more. We're gonna go through the combine here, but um, because I'm not only don't have him at the top, I'm gonna have a guy like Fatanu ranked ahead of him. Um, you know, I, I just don't think he carries his body super well right now, if that makes sense. Uh, I, I think he's going to have, you know, some issues with the, the athletic pass rushers. I think he's going to rely on going against the bull rushers, like the physical guys. Um, you know, he, I don't think he, I don't love how he uses his feet as well. I think he's just waddling around, um, you know, a lot of the time. Um, that's just what I see when I watch him. So I, and he, he didn't give up much, you know, but there was moments where I didn't think they were the best reps. And I'm like, if he goes against an NFL pass rusher here, he's going to give up something. He's going to give up a little bit. So I am not nearly as high on Fashanu as, uh, as some others. I don't know like how high I would grade the pick down here even. Uh, but I do like, like he kind of like has an Armstead feel like he's not strong Armstead, but a lot of upside and maybe he can get there. Uh, and then learning from him, possibly, and they could use another tackle to kind of replace him for the future, but another one in general. So I did like the fit here. I'm just not nearly as high on him as anyone else at the moment. So we'll, we'll see where he ends up. Uh, 22, and I had this last time. It's like kind of an unusual pick, but I guess it depends on if the Eagles do trade Hassan Reddick or not. They'd be too good to pass. What else do they need? A lot of the other things are kind of things of the future offense line, corners, um, safeties will be the safety they need now, but they can be a little early to take a safety. Linebackers could it be Edger and Cooper from Texas A&M. It's possible, uh, but they're always looking for pass rushers and verses available. Another guy I'm not I like verse. He's good, not quite as high on him as some of the other ones. Um, probably gonna be my number four pass rusher in the class. But those guys, there's not much splitting them up. Um, lacking length, I do like his his, his strength. His get offs pretty pretty solid. He makes big plays in big moments. I do love that it is big with pass rushers. Like end of the game, my clutch situations. I thought he was a lot better last year compared to the year that just passed. Um, plays tight, kind of like stiff the way he's moving, where he's running around. Um, I'm just a little bit more impressed with the other pass rushers, the other top pass rushers. Uh, but and the Eagles would like him. Uh, at 22 and be too good to pass for them. Uh, and then the Texans grab a corner to pair with Derek Stingley. They get Kool-Aid and McKinstry, who, um, you know, pretty technically sound in zone coverage. I think you'd fit D'Amico Ryan's defense. You know, a lot of experience, physical as well. Not, you know, we'll see what he, it kind of might be pretty big for him. Was he going to run the 40? That's kind of a question. Like, it's up in the air. I could see him in multiple different ranges. But um, I think a pretty good fit in that defense uh, under D'Amico Ryan's there. So it could be corner. It could be defensive lineman uh, for the Texans. 24. Cowboys take Tyler Guyton. Um, I guess Guyton probably in the conversation for tackle four for me around that range. Uh, he's maybe the upside king of the group. Uh, not a lot of starting experience, but pretty good for the limited starting experience. Very athletic, very long. He showed out at the at the Senior Bowl as well. Um, so co the Cowboys kind of looking for the future Tyrone Smith here. If they can get Tyrone Smith back and have him learn for you know a year from him, that would be fantastic as well. Um, Played right tackle, but again, limited experience, So and he was so solid. I, I think somebody could use him at left, honestly, especially in a Cowboy situation if he's sitting one year and learning because um, he is an upside guy. 25, the Packers going Cooper DeGene, who's not going to work out the combine, so that's tough. Um, but athletic dude, playmaker as well. Feels like you can put this guy in offense, you know, the way he returns interceptions or punts. Like, he's just so, his vision's there, the strength is there, you know, elusiveness, but really solid corner. Really solid in zone coverage. Um, uh, and you kind of get the feel the way he plays that he probably can play safety as well. So the Packers kind of can use him. They can use that corner safety in the slot, you know, wherever they may need him. So it kind of felt like a good fit. Packers seem to pick some guys from the Big Ten as well. Uh, Iowa in the first round last year too. Uh, 26, Zach, Zach Frazier. There's another center. So I am not a huge center in the first round guy, but these centers are pretty damn good in this class. And 
and the talent at the top is really, really good in this draft. But where the talent is right here, it feels like the centers could be the best players available. Um, Frazier, I like. He's really he's not too far off from Jackson Powers. Johnson is one of the better center prospects we've seen in a long time. Um, I wouldn't put it past these guys to play guard. Frazier went against Texas. I watched that game, and Texas has some legit interior defense linemen. He played against Byron Murphy. He played events against uh, Devondre Sweat, and uh, he looked pretty good. Now, was it all on him? No, the guards were on them sometimes, but he looked pretty damn good. Uh, bully of a blocker. You know, he's not quite Jackson Powers Johnson, but um, he's there. He's, he's right around there. So I think the Bucks, um, you know, definitely could use him as the long-term center of the future there in, in Tampa. So watch out for those centers to go uh, maybe a little earlier than you think. 27, uh, the Cardinals go get their corner. I thought about interior defensive line here. Do they need that pretty bad? The run defense was pretty pretty, pretty damn bad. Uh, but Nate Wiggins, pretty good value here at 27. Uh, definitely need a corner in that Jonathan Gannon defense. So they grab him. Maybe it's too good to pass. Wiggins, some people have him kind of as a corner one, kind of going up there. Not quite there. He's a really good playmaker. He's really good at watching the quarterback. And when the ball's in the air or if it's caught underneath, he's really good at coming up and attacking, almost plays like a free safety in that way. Uh, some people say they like his kind of his techniques already good. I, I, just, I disagree with that a little bit. I think he, that's where he kind of needs to work, kind of stands tall a little bit. The way he opens up his hips I think could be a little bit better. Um, I think like Terry and Arnold, Kool-Aid and McKinstry, Cooper DeGene, they're, they're a little more polished when it comes to the technique. I think Mitchell and Wiggins are the playmakers that, you know, really go in the balls, uh, you know, out in front of them. Uh, they're kind of in the same category there. So the Cardinals take Wiggins at 27, 28. Uh, Tavondre Sweat from Texas. So both Texas defensive tackles go. Sweat is more of the bigger body run stuffer. Uh, put him at nose tackle. Um, but, yeah, he, he can – he can uh, kind of plug the whole front up there when it comes to the run game. And uh, the Bills got a long list of free agents on the interior defensive line. And um, Daquan Jones was so good for them early last year that he came back and he wasn't really the same. He, you know, he did come back earlier than expected from injury. Uh, he's a free agent. I think you get a younger version of that here with uh, Devondre Sweat. So uh, that's something I think the Bills could be interested in, like, a, you know, around uh, at 28 if they stay put there. And then pick 29. We got maybe a little of a surprise. Don't we get the Lions connected with receivers here? But they definitely actually could use a receiver. But I think they, they need one pretty, maybe not pretty bad, but they, they I think they need one. You know, St. Brown is such a dominant receiver. Uh, I think people think about him and they're like, all right, and Jamison Williams is pretty decent. They think about those guys um, and think they don't need a receiver. But St. Brown dominates the slot. Not that he can't do more, he can, but what I think they're missing is that outside receiver contested catch guy that can do, you know, go up and get the ball, can make that big play, kind of look for that next Megatron. And Kieran Coleman kind of fits that profile. Not that, you know, he's not going to be Calvin Johnson, obviously, nobody is, but um, that's kind of what they could be looking for, kind of what they don't have. I mean, a, a far better version of Josh Reynolds here, who is a free agent, and then. Was sneaky good for them, but maybe let them down the NFC Championship game a little bit. But it's just something I can see, you know, Dan Campbell, like this is a type of guy I can see, like I see that see them liking Keon Coleman, which some people talk about him in the second round now because he doesn't get as much separation as the other guys. But I think it'd be a little bit overthinking. I mean, this is a freaky dude. I, I know he's not a big separator; he's a contested catch guy, but he's got the athleticism. I think he's a you know he's a DK Metcalf type player. He might be a little more. He might be a little more athletic. We'll see, but uh, this is a big-time playmaker here. So I, I, think, I still think he's got to go in the first round here, even if it's late. So I would like him with the Lions and make that offense that much more explosive. Uh, the Ravens, a little bit of a wild-card pick here. Go Darius Robinson, who was one of the standouts of the Senior Bowl for Missouri. He played interior defensive line up until this year, and then he played off the edge this year, and he looked like a natural. He looks like an old-school pass rusher, you know, weighing about 290 around there, uh, 280, 280s. Um, but I think the Ravens would like him. Like that versatility seems like a Ravens type guy where he can play the end in their scheme or outside linebacker. They can kind of use him in multiple ways. You know, looking for another Jadavion Clowney, perhaps. Uh, and he has a lot of upside. So they could go that route. They could go offensive line, or they can go receiver as well here. Uh, the Ravens, that is. And then. 31, the Niners definitely could use offensive line. Armarius Mims from Georgia, who has very limited experience but looked pretty solid. He didn't play every game this year, though, and, he, again, he has limited experience, so that's a little a little tough. But big-body guy, um, played right tackle for them. 
um, for, for Georgia. So it could, could be a plug and play guy there. Maybe they don't play him right away because he's inexperienced, but he has a lot of upside here. Maybe learn, learn some Trent Williams. They move him to that side. Could definitely see that. But offensive line help uh, could be needed here for the Niners at uh, 31. And then the Super Bowl champs at 32. We'll actually do one for the Panthers as well. But Troy Franklin, speedy receiver, very good tracking the ball downfield. Got, got a lot of separation for Oregon, was a big part of their offense. Just seems to fit the profile for the Chiefs, like what they're looking for, and they definitely could use another one. Um, you know, another, you know, they liked Rice because he's athletic. He's, uh, you know, good after the catch. He's pretty, you know, again, pretty speedy. Franklin's going to be more speedy in the straight line, not like an after the catch or, you know, crazy after the catch, you know, I guess in terms of, he can burn guys after the catch, but in terms of Rice's physicality, but he's going to be uh, maybe a little bit better down the field, getting separation there. Um, so maybe what the Chiefs wanted from MVS, who they could move on from. Um, so I do like that fit for the Chiefs with Troy Franklin at 32. Uh, and then I, I did have one for the Panthers, and we'll do our – and this was kind of a quick updated mock draft as we approach the Combine, uh, a big one right after the Combine you know, a week from today with the updates, the stock reports, and um, we'll do two rounds as well. But throw the Panthers in here. Badly need a receiver. Adam A. Mitchell, A.D. Mitchell from Texas, who's a you know another big time outside receiver, big time contested catch guy. When the game's on the line, you kind of try to go to him, perhaps. So I do like that about him. So a guy to pair with. I know they probably got to replace Adam Thielen because he's not going to be there forever. But I got to pair with him because Thielen's more of the slot receiver. Um, so for Dave Canales, Thielen's more of your Godwin, you know, declining one though, uh, older one, and then Mitchell's more of your Mike Evans. Uh, for that offense, do they go for a Mike Evans if he's available in free agency? Do they go for a? I would love Michael Pittman for them. I've said that before. Uh, if he's available, that's the question. You know, franchise tag or could could be placed on him as well. So, through the Panthers in here, but again, big mock draft coming up, and then each day of the combine, we have uh, winners and losers, big big stock reports. The post uh, combine mock drafts always huge. Be two rounds, so joins for that. Almost at 100k subscribers. Appreciate you guys for your support. If you're not subscribed, you will not regret it uh, by doing so. We have all kinds of NFL coverage. I can't wait for free agency. I love our, I love free agency. I love our free agency content. So join us. Check out our sponsors, GLD Shop, Liquid IV, Code Goat. Uh, follow us on Twitter. Very important for the breaking news and takes. Links pinned in the comments for anything you're looking for. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.